Good evening. I need everybody to stand on your feet and let's, come on, let's give, let's give, let's give it up. Let's give it up and let's, let's, let's offer up. Come on, let's offer up a praise, a hand clap of peace, a hand clap of joy. Come on, a hand clap of love, a hand clap of unity. This is a defining moment in the history of our city. This is a defining moment in, uh, in, in, in Newark. And while you're standing on your feet, I need everybody. You know, I'm from a place where they are used to showing hospitality. Um, I'm, I'm from a place where regardless of who you are, you deserve a hug. I know since I've migrated and you all have migrated up south, individuals seem to be very impersonable and don't really want to get close, but we need to get close. And uh, that's why we are so tightly packed in here, so you can get close. So what I need everybody to do right quick like is either shake somebody's hand, hug somebody and say good evening. It's good to see you in here this evening. Come on. Go across the aisles. I need you going across the aisles. Come on, I need you walking across the aisles. Play some song music. I need you walking across the aisle. I see I see Dr. Leonard Jeffrey that is there. I see Dr. Leonard Jeffrey that is there. Uh, where's my family? They supposed to be seated. I think, do we have some seats? No, 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 no. We got to have some protocol in the house. Are we okay? Oh, yeah, we got to make sure. Yeah, amen. Y'all keep hugging. I got to make sure. <laughs> no, come on. Y'all keep hugging. Amen. Reach across the aisle. Come on. Let's give, come on. Let's give it up for a praise honor in here tonight. Come on. An honor of praise legacy. You may be seated. You may be seated. It's a, it's, a real, it's a real honor. It's a real honor. We're going to ask that you would respect the sanctity of the sanctuary tonight, that you would give us your undivided attention because something significant is occurring in this place tonight. And with all that is going on in our country, with all that is going on in our nation, with all that is going on in our city, we need to get serious about coming together, leveraging resources, leveraging our economic advantages, leveraging our political advantages. And we can't do that if we're going down separate places in the aisle. How many of y'all believe that we need to do something different? Come on now, how many of y'all believe we need to do something different? And just because Donald Trump are trying to ban Muslim doesn't mean we're gonna ban them from our church. So I think, I think we need to indeed honor. How many of y'all believe that we ain't gonna let that happen, and we ain't gonna let Donald Trump get in the office. How many of y'all believe we need to go vote and we need to make sure that our voices are heard and we need to make sure that we protect the home front? Come on, tell somebody, we gotta. I, I, I have to tell you, I have to tell you uh, that I believe that uh, all of us in here ought to be deeply inspired. And I believe that all of us in here ought to consider the fact that this is a new day and the beginning of something that ought to be serious and significant. And we need to be sending a message around the notion of we are coming together in a very powerful way to do something that we should have been doing a long time ago. Now, if you believe that, I need you to show me some love. Come on, if you believe that, I need you to show me some love and I need you to rally around that because that's what we need to be doing. Come on, that's what we need to be doing. That's what we need to be doing. Um, I have asked that some things would get done tonight and you heard some of that a few moments ago. You heard some of that a few moments ago. It is absolutely imperative and I have made a decision to not have the media in here tonight. That's a conscious decision. I've made a decision not to have the media in here tonight. And the reason that decision has been made is because I don't want anything distorted and I don't want anything that is positive to be turned upside down and made a mockery out of in order to not let that happen 
Look at somebody and say, it's just us is in here tonight. It's just, come on now. It's just us is in here tonight. Come on now. It's just us is in here tonight because we've made a conscious decision that this is a community get together. It's a community meeting. And it is really focused on the seriousness of us coming together and therefore making a giant step. Uh, to leverage, if you will, uh, the talent, the resources, the expertise that we have in our community to support our mayor and to help move things forward so that we all can have a stronger, better community and strong families so that we can therefore, amen, mend the brokenness that exists in our homes and with our children and with our men, with our women. We need to we need to absolutely do that. And, and, and so we have made that decision uh, that we would not have them in here. And here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. Um, what I'm gonna ask you to do is please refrain uh, from taking stuff and doing stuff uh, where people will take it out of context. I'm gonna ask you to do that. Uh, what I would love for you to do is help spread the word that something took place here tonight that was significant in terms of moving, moving us forward as a people. That's what I would hope you would do. That's what I hope you would do. So I know that we're living in the day of social media. I understand that. Uh, but I would really appreciate it if you carry more away from here in your heart that you can therefore touch another brother and another sister with, as opposed to sending a picture without uh, a voice and sending something uh, without any understanding of the context. And so I'm just gonna ask everybody to keep that in mind because it would be a tragedy for all of us to come together tonight, meaning the kind of good that we want to have come out of here, and then have something done that is not aligned with the objective that the minister and us have in terms of trying to move something forward. Now, if you're in agreement with that, let me hear from you right now. If you're in agreement with that. Come on, let me hear, let me. Let me, let me also say that I'm acutely aware um, that there is a buzz in the city of Newark. And uh, I've gotten a lot, a lot, a lot of feedback um, in terms of, you know, us coming together and having this community meeting. Um, you just need to know that that had not bothered me one iota. And let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. If you are not controversial, if you ain't creating a buzz, chances are you ain't doing nothing. I'm reminded, you know, of a passage of scripture in the Bible when Jesus was on the coast of Caesarea Philippi and he asked of his disciples, whom do men say that I am? What's the buzz in the community? <laughs> what are they really saying? And they began to share with, with Jesus the feedback that was going on in the community and He's, he asked them, who do you say that I am? And so in many instances, the important thing tonight is that you are here because I believe that you are interested in wanting to see some good stuff come out of something in order to make this work in our city. And so what's most important tonight is what you will say when you leave here. What would be most important is what you will do with this once you leave here. But I cannot uh, tell you that anytime anything has moved forward, it has been surrounded by controversy. And, um, 
In the process of doing that, you're going to have some negatives and you're going to have some positives. But if you believe in what you're doing, uh, then you move forward with what you're doing. So we believe in what is taking place here tonight. We believe that we have brothers and sisters in the nation, brothers and sisters that have made a significant contribution uh, to our city and to our nation and in our state. And we believe that we got some wonderful Christians and uh, they are represented here tonight. And I believe that we ought to be coming together in spite of what folks might say in order to move the city and move our state forward. So if you don't mind, let's give it up for unity tonight. Let's, let's give it up for unity. Um, Come on, let's give it up for unity, strength, peace, love, understanding. Let's, let's give it up for that. Uh, give it up for that uh, tonight. Um, there's, there's, there's a person here tonight that I um, have had the distinct honor of being with on uh, numerous occasions. And um, it is very clear to me that her commitment and her devotion and her belief in the city and what is going on is, is absolutely at the core and at the heart of her soul and her spirit. She has gone through a lot. But like an unto Fannie Lou Hamer, she stands. She stands to make sure that individuals don't forget that as a people we have come a long ways. And that our dignity and that our courage and our faith has gotten us to where we are today. And she is the mother of the honorable mayor of the city of Newark. And I want her, you need to come and stand right here. I want to honor you tonight. You need to come. Mitty, Mitty, why don't you escort her right here? Come on. I, I want her to turn around. Y'all need to really give it up for her life. Come on, you all. We, we have every... We have every reason to celebrate her tonight. We have every reason to acknowledge her tonight. We have every reason to have her represent all the ladies that are here. So if I don't hear anybody else clap, I ought to hear every female, every lady, every woman in this house tonight to give it up. Give it up for her. And I, I sincerely, I sincerely want to thank you. I sincerely want to thank you. And may God bless you. May God bless you. Um, the minister has really agreed to come, and uh, this program will, will be starting uh, momentarily. And so, right now just for a few brief moments because I, I really cannot say enough about all of the individuals who have been involved in making this happen tonight and I really can't say enough about what you all have gone through to be here tonight in spite of the weather predictions um, you have turned out in large numbers our gym is packed to capacity which holds at least eight to 900 people, if not more. Our fellowship center is packed to capacity. Come on in. Our fellowship hall is packed to capacity. And our chapel is packed to capacity. And this place in here is packed to capacity. And I can't say enough about the spirit that exists in here tonight because we all believe that we are at a point where we need 
to work together. We're all, come on now, we're all at a place where we know that that is an absolute necessity. And so I want to really, from the bottom of my heart, thank all of the persons who have been so instrumental in helping to make sure that this, this went off. And I want you to look around because contrary to popular belief, folk think when we come together, you're gonna have chaos. But I want you to know we're smooth, organized, debonair, right? And it's going good, amen? All right. And um, I, I certainly wanna take this opportunity to, uh, and I'm gonna acknowledge a few more people later on, but I'm getting some of this done now. We, we have, um, the president of our city council here tonight. And I, um, I, I, I've, known, I've known Sister Crump a long time. Come on, let's, let's give it up for the president of our city council. I, uh, I've known her a long time, and this was way before I came to Newark. Her, I had the distinct honor when I ran international for AT&T, and um, her husband reported to me and became ill when we were at a conference in Scotland. And one of the things that we did was made sure that that family was cared for. And I had not met her before, but when I met her, it was something unique and special about her spirit. And she's always been that way. And um, I, I am so honored to have her in our, in our midst tonight. I also want to acknowledge a lady uh, that I have been very, 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 very close to uh, for a number of years, who has beyond a doubt committed herself to Newark and someone who was at the Million Man March and came back and organized uh, women in our community and started WISM. And man, you talking about a heart of gold. And you talk about somebody who will go the last mile, will give you the shirt off her back, the blouse off of her back, because that's how much she loves her people. Um, and so, you know, I just want you to give it up for Sister Frederica Bay, uh, who is, come on, who is, um, come on, give it up for Frederica Bay. Come on, give it up for Frederica Bay. Amen. And my, my family is not in here yet, but when they come, I'll say something. But I also want to thank the fine people of Metropolitan Baptist Church. Come on, let's, my sound crew, come on, give it up for the media, all of our ushers, our security team. Um, it takes a lot to run an operation like this, what we do here. It takes a lot. And you can't do it without a team. I don't care how much they talk about Brady, I don't care how much they talk about the quarterback, you can't win with the other folks on the field. So we, 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 we do it as a team. And I also want to thank all the officers of our church, all of our deacons and all of our deaconesses and trustees and persons who have supported me in making sure that we got to where we are tonight. So let's give it up for the leadership of our church and what, what they have done. And we have our we have the chairman of our trustee ministry, Brother Jerry Owens. Jerry, why don't you stand? He just retired from the longshoreman out there. He got a whole lot of money. So I'm not giving you up, Jerry. I'm not giving you up. Um, and so she just came out, y'all. She heard me acknowledge. Now, I met this young lady down at Gremlin State University. And uh, on June the 9th, um, I would have been with her, let me know, that's the wrong word. She would have put up with me for like 43 years. So this is the queen bee. This is my soulmate. 
This is affectionately known as Lady Linda, Sister J. Y'all got to give it up with her, because I got to go back out. All right. All right. Amen. So we will be back momentarily. Amen? And we'll get rolling. This is a blessed day. This is a blessed day. This is a long-awaited day in our city. Oh, you can do better than that on a blessed day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad on this day. In his absence, to our honorable mayor, Roz Baraka, yeah, we need to really, can we stand even in his absence and give him a round of encouraging applause? The leadership of our city. At this time, I want you to turn to a neighbor. And my prayer is that hopefully you're sitting next to someone new. And I know that oftentimes as the day goes on, individuals may not have that fresh morning breath. But I want you right now to greet your brother and your sister who is next to you. Say hello to them. How are you? Good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. You can reach across the aisle even. Go ahead. Listen, we don't get together enough. Reach across. Say hello. Hug somebody new. Whatever your greeting may be. Assalamu alaikum. If it's hello, how are you? Greet each other. Because we often don't have the spirit of greeting. And so we will now move swiftly with the program so that we can bring up the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And so at this time, I would like to call Dr. John Williford to the podium and he will lead us in the first of two community prayers that will be shared from individuals from dual communities. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. John Williford. Will you please stand to your feet? And if you will, if you will grab the hand next to you and let us bow together. Almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the creator of male and female, man and woman, in your image for your glory, we come before you this evening. And Father God, we ask that your spirit of truth, your spirit of love, and your spirit of unity will move from heart to heart and from mind to mind. Father God, we pray for our community. We, Lord, we pray that every lying spirit that seeks to divide us will be silenced tonight. And Father God, we pray that you will have a word for us, that when we leave this room, this meeting, we will be encouraged, we will be inspired. And Lord God, that's why we humble ourselves before you. We cannot do anything without you. There cannot be any movement without you. There cannot be any unity without you. So we humble ourselves tonight in your presence, in the name we pray, Christ Jesus, amen. And now, our brother Khalid Muhammad, Carlos, Carlos Muhammad, will come at this time with our Muslim prayer.
we will recite the most oft-repeated prayer of the Muslims, and please assume a prayer position that is most comfortable for you. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, all praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, Master of this day of judgment in which we now do live. Thee alone do we serve, and thee alone do we beseech for thine aid. O Allah, guide us on the straight path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed thy favors, and not upon whom those who thy wrath has been brought down, nor those who are gone astray. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to take this time to acknowledge a gentleman who many years ago was critical in the life of his brother. And most importantly, I want to acknowledge him because it was more than 15 years ago on the campus of Morehouse College that I had the pleasure of becoming this young man's brother. Throughout his life, not only would he serve this nation through the Marine Corps, but he will be called to also be the individual who would give of his body to Alonzo Mourning when he was going through an ailment and an issue. He ended up being the individual who donated his kidney to his cousin Alonzo Mourning. It was years ago, in the late 90s, when I was with him, and he put a cassette tape, one of the most powerful speeches from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And so Jason B. Cooper, I want you to stand at this time, and I want us to acknowledge you and encourage you if you would stand, brother, right now. And I want us to give God the praise for this brother, his sacrifice, how he serves our community. Thank you. Now, many of you who are here today know that this is the season of Pentecost. It is a season that is shared out of the book of Acts, where upon Jesus departing from this earth instructs his disciples that they should continue with the great work that is at hand. That work is critical in spreading the church. It was on that night, and early in the morning, the word says at 9 o'clock a.m., there were those who were gathered together, many from different nations. But when they were in the upper room, they were all on one accord. So even as I look in the back and I see my big brother David Muhammad as I look at the front and I see my mother and my sisters and I look at this front row and I see my brothers Obalaji and Amiri Baraka, even behind me I have brothers from the nation. I have sisters who are sitting from the nation.
So I'm going to move here. One thing my father has taught me is how to read a crowd. And you know what's interesting? I was like, I was, I was saying, wow, Reverend DJ, look at what you're saying. The people are standing up. But there was a light shining behind me. <laughs> so, welcome. 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 Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Ruin DJ is beside himself with joy. It is at this time that I want to bring up a brother who the first time when I heard him speak, I was extremely impressed with his theological grounding in the word, the way that he was able to address men struck a chord in my heart. But most importantly, the work that he does here in the city at Mosque, Muhammad's Mosque 25, right here in Newark, and those individuals who are a part of that mosque know This young man is serious. This young man has studied. This young man is a light in our community. It brings me such honor to bring up my brother, a man who sat at the table with me and said, David, we can make this work. And I look forward to longevity of relationship with him because I know that we are the future generation of our community. Ladies and gentlemen, won't you welcome my brother, Minister, Student Minister Jackson will come at this time with a welcome. Jesus said, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same spirit. But as a student and follower of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he causes us to see and to know that it is always appropriate and proper for we who seek to invoke the spirit and blessings of God to begin such endeavors in the name of God. So customarily in Islam, we say in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. However, we bear witness that regardless of name, land or language, creed, class or color, there is but one God. And we bear all praises to Allah. All praises to Allah. All praises due to Allah. And we bear witness to all of his prophets, messengers, and the scriptures that they brought. I greet you all with the greeting words of peace we said in the Arabic language of Aysalam Alaikum, which means peace be unto you. To our esteemed pastors, David Jefferson Sr., David Jefferson Jr., the many parishioners and supporters of Metropolitan Baptist Church, our beloved Mayor Rash J. Baraka, the many civic, grassroots, youth leaders, clergies, imams, fellow travelers, and concerned citizens, we are honored with your presence. We are honored with your presence 
because your presence signifies and exemplifies to us that God is present. For the scripture teaches us that in the last days there would be neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female, but we will all be one in Christ Jesus. All praises be to Allah. And such a scripture presupposes that a man would be so favored and honored by God that God would share with that man a wisdom so profound that it would remove the unseemly impenetrable walls of classism, racism, sexism, and all of those other things used to fragment and segment humanity. Well, brothers and sisters, from the looks and smiles on your faces, I believe that you, as well as I know, that such a man is with us today. All praise is due to Allah. As a Muslim, the Holy Quran says, raise not your voice above the prophet's voice, nor speak before him. So following that tradition, I'll bring up our regional minister, Brother Abdul Qadir Muhammad, and take my seat. Aisalaamu As Alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, I myself will be very, very brief. Our beloved minister is here, and he's ready to go and talk to you. Is that all right? So I have the distinct honor and pleasure to bring back to the podium our beloved pastor here, our dearly hard-working brother who has been here for quite some time working here at Metropolitan Baptist Church. And with that said, I'd like to say, in the name of Allah God, the beneficent, the merciful, and we thank him for his coming and intervening in our affairs, for coming to intercept, so to speak, and get us back on our right track, our right course. And we thank him over and over again for giving to us a great man, that has also given us a way, the guidance and the great time of our struggle here in North America. And that one today, of course, is the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. But tonight we have his national representative here tonight. Huh? And that one tonight, of course, is the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. I greet you again with the greeting words of peace and paradise of our salam alaikum. Pastor David Jefferson, senior doctor. David Jefferson, Sr., pastor, teacher, visionary, community servant, attorney, and of course, you heard him earlier, husband, father, grandfather, are many, are among the many ministerial, ministerial roles of this great pastor of Metropolitan Baptist Church. Born in Doline, Louisiana, coming from great parents, of course, over the years, he has traveled and received several degrees from going in and out of colleges and universities to become a great, great, great man here today, residing in a church right here in Newark, New Jersey. The third pastor here to answer the call to this great church now that he is leading 7,000 plus member congregation. Let's give him a round of applause for that great effort. With that, I'd like to just put that to a side and just say to us, well, no one else would take us. He said, you can come here. It reminds me of a good Samaritan. Hmm? He didn't turn his back on you and me tonight. He didn't say, go someplace else. He opened the doors for us tonight and let us come inside the inn, a place where we can keep our lives in order to be able to hear this great word tonight from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Thank you so much. Again, I'm eager to hear 
what Minister Farrakhan has to say, assalamu alaikum. Pastor David Jefferson, Sr. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. Good evening. Good evening. You all have seen me before. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My brothers and my sisters, this is a defining moment in our city and in our community. This is a cataclysmic moment in our city and in our community. There are moments in the Bible that are described as cataclysmic moments that you cannot go back and repeat. There are moments when you have to recognize that you are living in something that historically will live on after that moment goes about. This is that moment. I, um, I, I am so grateful tonight that heaven is smiling upon what is happening here tonight. I believe that I, if I could tiptoe through the balcony of glory and get a sneak preview, I believe that God and Jesus and the angels are smiling tonight, saying, look at my people that are called by my name. Look at my people. This is a moment tonight when that which God created in the Garden of Eden that the enemy tried to destroy is now coming back together so that we might be one and be a people that God is proud of. And that's what the family is all about. That's, that's, that's what the family is all about. It is about the fundamental unit of our society that will make for better institutions and better schools and better jobs and better this because our families are strong. And tonight, I want you to look at somebody and say, we have come together as family. Come on, turn, turn to somebody and say, we have come together as family. Yeah, we've come together as family. I was telling the minister a few moments ago that I am from a legacy of a family that I am so proud of. My mother had 17 children, lost two in miscarriage, but 15 of us made it here. 10 boys and five girls. She's 100 years old, going on to be 101 years old. I'm about family. I'm about family. I'm about family. I'm about family. And I thank God today that he has kept me with one woman. No slipping, no dipping, no diving, no shucking. Why don't you just stand up and wave your hand so that at least if they didn't see you before, they can see you again. And then I want all of my other family. You all please stand. I need all of my other family. That's, that's a daughter. That's a son-in-law. That's DJ's wife, Joni Raven. That's Dr. Joni right there. That's John David. That's Naya. Amen. That's my little foot. That, that's my smart academic. That's Joshua who fought the Battle of Jericho right there. Y'all give it up for Joshua. And that's Kimberly. That's my oldest child right there. So this is about, this is about, this is about, this is about Mr. and his willingness to really, really, really come with a powerful message tonight. A message that will speak to the hearts and souls and spirit of men and women and children, the family. 
because that's what we represent here tonight. And I am honored tonight to have a man who has a legacy of being a blessing to the nation. The Bible speaks of a God who is a generational God. Not that you just have one generation and the next one go about their own business, but the Bible says that I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The minister represent a legacy that has come down through the nation. And everybody here tonight from the nation ought to be proud and giving God the praise for Minister Farrakhan, who has stood tall, unequivocally, to speak the truth, to speak the truth, to strengthen his people, and to make sure that we reunite as a people. And so the moment is here. The time has come for us to come together as one, leveraging our spirituality, leveraging our economic resources, leveraging all of our political wisdom and saying enough is enough. We will no longer be divided, but we will be one because we are stronger when we are one than we are when we are divided. And so we say together, Together we stand. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and welcome to 149 Springfield Avenue to the Metropolitan Baptist Church in Newark, New Jersey, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. Put your... In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we give him praise and thanks for his mercy and his goodness to the human family. Whenever any member of this family strays from his straight path and earns his displeasure, before he punishes, he always raises from among the people a prophet or a messenger to whom he gives what is called revelation by means of scripture to guide the people back to the path that will earn them once again his favor. We thank Allah for Moses and the Torah and the Israelite prophets that gave us the Old Testament. We thank Allah for Jesus who gave us the Injil or the Gospel and the apostles who gave us the New Testament. We thank Allah for Muhammad ibn Abdullah through whom Allah sent down the final revelation that would unite all of the religions and bring us through the day of the judgment of this world. I am a student of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and I could never thank Allah enough for this great man that God gave to us to guide us to his straight path that we might reclaim our position with him as the first people 
in the light of the sun. As the original people of this universe, we who are considered the first and the last Alpha and Omega. I thank him for his coming to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, whom we see as the great expected Mahdi of the Muslims, a guide for those who have lost their way. If the Muslims had remained faithful to Prophet Muhammad, followed the Quran and followed his example, the Muslim world would not be in the condition that it is in today. And if the Christians had followed Jesus, not just talk about him, but live the life that he taught us to live, the Christian world would not be so upset. And if the Jews, who received so many prophets, had just said, I submit, the world of the Jews would not be in the condition that it is in. So Christians, Muslims, and Jews have failed. But God is not through with you yet. But the scepter of rulership won't be in your hands any longer. He has found material that has been tried in the furnace of affliction. He has found material that he can use as a foundational stone of an eternal kingdom. Who is this material that he has found? The despised, the rejected, the unloved, the unwanted, the black man and woman of America, the choice of God today to help bring this whole family and this earth together eternally under a new government of peace. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and a government shall be upon his shoulders, not the American government, not the Russian government, not the Chinese or Korean government, not the British and the European government. These are the governments of a world that has gone mad. But on the shoulders of this one born, a government of peace. And he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father, and of the increase of his government of peace, there shall be no end. That's the one I want to talk about tonight. I greet all of you with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. To my dear brother, friend, pastor, and teacher, the Reverend Dr. David Jefferson and his son, David Jefferson, Jr. To my wonderful little Newark minister,
as I sat there listening to you, there was a big smile on my face. Yes, sir, the apostle. And it reminded me of the time when Elijah Muhammad first heard me speak. Yes, sir. And he was sitting yes, sir, the like myself behind next to Brother Malcolm, and he had a big smile on his face. Thank you, dear And look at where time has brought oh. me. Yes, sir, dear and look at where time will bring you yes, if you keep on going. Thank you, dear Reverend Dr. Jefferson talked about family and talked about men taking charge of our responsibility. I'm here tonight to honor Mayor Raz Baraka, his mother, his family, I stopped what I was doing and I said I must go to Newark because I heard that someone threatened him, threatened his family, and I thought I should come to let the forces of evil know that God has given Newark a good man. You've had good men in the past, but there's something in the character of this man. His father, Amiri Baraka, and his beloved mother, <clears throat> nurtured him on the struggle of the ancestors that have gone on before us that laid down a great path for us to walk in. Not cowardly ancestors. Not ancestors that wanted something for self and not for the people. And so out of that family, that womb of a mother, and that life germ of a father, came some sons. One of whom was the principal of a great high school here in Newark. <clears throat> and I met him as he invited me to speak to his students. And after speaking to the students, we went into an office and his dad was present and Brother Raz talked to us about running to be mayor. I was very nervous when I heard his desire because that's not an easy thing to do if you want to do it right. He wanted to be mayor, and that means he had to campaign against somebody who might have been mayor but, or had just left being mayor. 
But I wanted him to know you're not fighting to win the office of the former mayor. You're fighting against a system that produces a series of men that never get the job done. We're in a great uh, election season. And the black vote has always been necessary when it's wartime and tax time and <laughs> when somebody would like to be president of the United States. And the black vote is always courted with fervor. And many promises are made that never get fulfilled. And after we vote for Lucifer, Satan, or the devil, <laughs> and they get the position that they were seeking, then they forget the promises that they made to us. The Holy Quran speaks of men like that and women like that. It said they promise only to deceive. That's the mark of Satan. He knows how to make the right promise. He knows how to give you hope in nothing. He knows how to make you taste what you want to eat, and yet <laughs> you never eat it. <laughs> and you end up dying of malnutrition. <laughs> Satan is a master deceiver. In fact, the scripture says he deceived the whole world. So are you living in the world? Are we in this world? Has Satan deceived us once again? Mrs. Clinton needs the black vote. She could never be president from Washington, D.C. down to Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. She's a smart woman. Very clever woman. I mean, she knows how to win our confidence. Because most con people run a confidence game. And I have many friends, oh, associates, not certain friends. <laughs> that are voting for Hillary. I can't be divided because you spent your vote in that way. I still love you. And then there's Mr. Donald Trump. Uh, That's a strange one. <laughs> I don't know where he stands. He hates you this minute and loves you the next. You're ugly one minute and you're beautiful the next. I don't know. But you know, 
I saw something in Trump that I, I liked. Not that I'm going to vote for him. <laughs> but he is a man, the first man in the history of those who run for the high office of president who walked in front of members of the Jewish community and said, I don't want your money and I don't need your money. Just stop right there. I said, now, when a man can tell you, I don't want your money, I don't need your money, I got $10 billion. Yeah. I'm going to finance my own campaign. Yeah. That man is free. See, he don't owe no piper to call the tune for him. He calls his own tune and he plays many different songs. I don't know whether we're going to dance the rumba tonight or the polka tomorrow. <laughs> but who cares? He, he, he's rich enough to call his own tune. That makes him a dangerous man. Money runs this country. Politics is a game played, but the banks, the banking system, the Wall Street, they run the show. You never get what you think you got. We sent Barack there. A good man, I mean, he, boy, when you saw him campaigning, man, I got up out of my bed five o'clock in the morning and waited in line to vote for my brother. That's unusual for me. Me and my wife were out there. He was selected before he was elected. Politics is a dirty game. And even if you're clean, you got to be careful. Because this game is so dirty, the clean ones get dirty when they get in it to play the game. And that's why I guess Jesus said, wash and be clean. Because after you get into that dirty game, you got to keep your garments clean by having something more pure to wash in to keep you from being sucked in to the wickedness of this system of things. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, Mr. Trump, boy, now you know members of the Jewish community control the media. I'm not anti-Semitic, so don't go there. I just know the truth. See, and knowing the truth is not enough. A lot of us know the truth, but we're afraid to tell it. So if the enemy can terrorize you with his power to inflict pain, then he'll force good people to bow. Barack is a good man, 
I noticed that uh, the mullah in Afghanistan was killed the other day, and the media wanted to make sure that we knew that it was Barack who pulled the trigger. <laughs> Barack had to sign off on his death. You understand? Yes, A man who won the Peace Prize is now the head of several wars that are going on. And no drone goes off and kills people without his signature. The enemy knows the time. Pardon me if I take my time tonight. I, I, uh, I don't teach from notes. I let you all tell me what my subject should be by reading you. So I'm just going to take my time. And if what I say touches you where you are, that message was meant for you. Okay? They've made my brother a killer. And they want him to pull the trigger on me. Members of the Jewish community can't take me anymore. In the 80s, when I stood up with Reverend Jackson and protected him with the FOI before he got uh, Secret Service, that Christian Muslim unity, they didn't like that. I'm not a politician. I, I hate it myself because I don't know the art of compromising on truth. Maybe, maybe some of you will try to teach me that game. But God has brought me from where I was to where I am not by compromising my position that is principled, but standing up on that principle and be willing to die on that principle before you allow yourself to be an agent of corruptible people and forces. Just bear with me, I'm just warming up slightly. This is not the Barack Obama that we voted for. He still got that good in him. But when you get up in high places with your black face, you fall in with the crowd. I guess that's why Paul said we we war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. You don't get up high. All of a sudden, we don't know who you are. Because when you get in the seat, you feel some electric shock in your behind and you wonder what are you sitting on <laughs> and then you find out that the real people who make people are the ones that make your seat so they always give us an offer that we can't refuse and we end up bowing down and 
Satan wins and God stands afar off and so does justice. Bernie Sanders He's a Jewish man with a lot of character. He's saying all the right words. And I believe he intends to do good. But he's not strong enough to break the system. The system is strong enough to break him. Now, I want to stop for a moment to say a scripture. And, and I want you to look at yourself. In the Bible, there's a, a verse that says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I want you to think about that. How many of us cave in under pressure? Here's your body, this beautiful body Every square inch of it upholds 15 pounds of atmospheric pressure. And the reason you don't cave in to atmospheric pressure is because you got pressure on the inside equaling the pressure on the outside. So you walk with that pressure and you don't even feel it. But the pressure of corrupt forces love to corrupt good intended men and women. And we cave in. We cave in. Some people think Farrakhan is crazy because he challenges forces that have broken many men before him. But they haven't broken me. I want you to look at your brother. I'm 83 years old. Ain't no way tired of fighting this enemy. Look at my brow. It ain't furrowed with wrinkles. There's a light around my face and around my head because greater is he that is in me. But who is the he that is in me? You should want to get him in you. Because, see, church is not a game. We can't play with God and play with Christ and play with Muhammad and play with the Quran and play with the Bible and Quote, but never live what you preach. <laughs> 
See, I want to talk to you about this Christ that we all talk about. But if you really knew him, you wouldn't break so easily when Satan comes knocking at your door. You wouldn't grow your business to a certain level and the enemy comes and gives you an offer that you can't refuse so you sell off years of people's sacrifice for money. So our banks close and our great businesses, we lose them. But we still have jet, we still have ebony, but we don't have the building that Mr. Johnson sacrificed so much to give us something in downtown Chicago that we would be proud of, but it's gone now. Essence Magazine, gone now. BET, gone now. Independence Bank in Chicago, gone now. Fat Farm, gone now. Baby Fat, gone now. Everything we got that would make us proud as a people, when you get it to a certain height, here comes Satan. I don't give a damn how he look. I'm saying it's Satan coming after you. You ought to know that Satan is going to try us all. You ought to know that. The Jesus that I know, Satan took him up on a mountain, they tell me. Satan always know what your father promised you that you haven't got yet. And Satan comes in between the promise and its fulfillment and then says, I got that. Just bow down to me and don't worry. Ain't nobody going to bother you. I got this. So they took Jesus up on the mountain. They thought he was just one of them Palestinian punks. <laughs> And when they got him up on the mountain, <laughs> Satan said, hey, look at all of that. See, your father told you you was going to have a kingdom. It ain't come yet. But, but look at all of that. <laughs> That's mine. He said, if you bow down to me, all of this can be yours. And Jesus had the strength to say, Get thee behind me, Satan. In the 80s, they were testing me. Every brilliant one of their correspondents, they would bring me on their television shows and try to break the minister down. And the minister broke them down. They had to leave. Yeah. Miss Barbara Walters came to my home in Chicago. She had a book this thick. She said, Minister, I'm going to ask you questions for an hour and a half. She's telling me how much time, you know, in my house. <laughs> so she said, now, if, of course, you need a break because you're perspiring, um, I'll, I'll stop and 
give you a chance to get yourself together. I mean, what arrogance, you know? And every question she asked me, God give me the answer just that quick, you know? Finally, she was sweating. And she needed a little break, you know. <laughs> Go ahead, Miss Walters, and, and take a little break. <laughs> Sam Donaldson, she called him on the telephone from my office. Sam? Every question I asked him, Sam, he didn't duck any of those questions. Why should I? If I know the truth. When the enemy can't make you afraid, then he gets terrified. And to all the black men that's in the house. There's a plan afoot to feminize you. Dress you up in little sissy clothes. They love to bend you, black man. And it seems like you don't mind bending. You don't have the will to resist. The Bible says, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But if you don't resist him, he'll stand there and overcome you. When are you going to wake up, black man, that there's power today for you? the Jews never did like Jesus. Not the Jesus, the prophet, but Jesus, the Messiah. See, Jesus, the prophet, foretold Jesus, the Messiah. In the Quran, it talks about the Messiah. I don't have my Quran with me, but I have scholars here that can help me out if, if, I, if I miss a word. But the Quran talks about Jesus, the Messiah. It says he will open the eyes of the blind by Allah's permission. So he don't have the power on his own to do it, but with God's permission, he'll open the eyes of the blind. He'll make the deaf hear and the dumb speak. By God's permission, he will even raise the dead to life by Allah's permission. And he will take clay and form it into a bird and breathe into it and it will become a bird by God's permission. 
The Messiah is not a prophet. The Messiah is really the end of prophets. The Messiah is not a prophet. The Messiah is God's presence in a human being. We're talking about that he that you got to get in you. Jesus, the Messiah. It says God, listen to this, not will reveal to him the book. No. It says God is going to teach him the book and the wisdom, the Torah and the gospel. He's going to know it all. It's one thing to reveal something to you. That don't mean you understand what was revealed. But when God becomes the teacher and he is the best knower of those who know and when God chooses to teach you, he explains the things that confounded the prophets. And that's why Muhammad in the Quran is called a light giving Son, You're not moonlight. Prophets are moonlight, meaning the moon reflects the light of the sun while the earth is in its shadow. But when God comes, <laughs> a prophet's light is nothing. Try and see something at night, even with a full moon. All the features of it, you can't quite make it out, but you can see the form of it. You can see some things about it, but, but when the sun comes up in the morning, everything is made clear. That's what the Messiah does with just a word out of his mouth. He makes things that you thought you understood clear. Jesus, the prophet, was a, a foreteller. He foreshadowed the Messiah. Who were his enemies? He had many enemies. He was hated without a cause. How could he be the son of God, man? And, and God put him through all of that. And yet Jesus never complained. Oh, boy, boy. This is some kind of human. Let me stop a minute and go back and find the father of the righteous. He's called Abraham. <clears throat> Y'all all right? I am too. <laughs> Look here. Here's, the, here's what the Quran says. I'm talking now to my brother Raz Baraka and to all of us in leadership. Allah says in the Quran, he tried Abraham with certain commands. And then the scripture says, and when Abraham had fulfilled them, God said, surely I will make you a leader of men. You don't get to be a leader from God until you've been thoroughly tried. Did you hear what I'm saying to you? 
Now, I want you to think of this as a trial. Poor Abraham, his wife Sarah couldn't bear no children, you know. Naturally, a man wants a man. He wants a boy child to succeed him. And then all of a sudden, the handmaiden, hmm, that's interesting. She gave Abraham a child. Now, those of you who have handmaidens, <laughs> but your name ain't Abraham. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. But I'm thinking of people that judge Abraham. Look at that man. He's supposed to be a righteous prophet. And he went into Sarah's handmaiden, a young woman. She gave him a son. The next scene comes up. Hey, guys, running in the wilderness with her child. What happened, Abe? What caused you to put her out in the wilderness? You know, sometimes you, you mess up a little bit and your wife gets so angry with you. And the woman was in the house as a handmaiden of Sarah. Get out! <laughs> Slept with my husband. But Ishmael was on the scene. He got what he was looking for. And Hagar was running in the wilderness with her child. And she was looking to the hills. Whence cometh my help? Like these women in here tonight, with no good men making you pregnant and running. They loved you because your form was so attractive. And you loved to show it, you know. And that ends up hurting you because you're so fine. You are so fine. And you know, there are parts of your body that the Holy Quran calls your adornments. That's, that, that, that's, a, that's a very beautiful way God describes your breasts. Adornments. I like that, you know. And you know, there's something about your hips and your buttocks, adornments. adornments. <laughs> they make people look at you. And you busy looking at yourself. I see you when you dress, you look over your shoulder. And you, you want to make sure you're all right back there. Because men, you see, there's a dog nature in man. Oh, you, you, you didn't hear me. See, we got to get to the he that's in me that make me a god. Because without him, I become a dog when I see a woman displaying her, her adornments. <laughs> no, I, he tell me, he says. He said, stay right there. I said, no, no, no. <laughs> Excuse me, Father, but 
I didn't have no script. <laughs> but I guess you want me to stay on this line to get these men right. And we can't get a man right until you get a woman right. Because where there are no decent women, there are no decent men, for it's the woman that's the mother of civilization. The breast is what we drew from in our formative years, our baby years. Some of you think that faith can be learned in church. Faith can be learned in the mosque. No, no, no. Faith is the gift of God. And there's no creature born, no male or female born without the seed, the germ of faith that if it is properly fed. You got to hear what your brother's been told to tell you. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. That's right. The evidence of things not seen. So when the baby comes forth from the womb, it's washed and swaddled and salted and cleansed and given to the mother and she puts it on her breast. One of those adornments. And the baby, you don't have to tell it how to suck. It starts pulling. First time it pulls, ain't nothing there. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the baby keeps pulling and pulling. And all of a sudden, that faith is rewarded with the substance that was hoped for. The problem with us, we had faith as a baby when we were put on our mother's breast. But this whole universe is the mammillary gland of God. And if you know how to pull on what God has put around you, the universe will never deny you what it is you hope for. So my dear sisters, have you seen these movies about Jesus? Have you seen the women that are around Jesus? Have you ever seen one of them with a mini dress? Have you ever seen the women around Jesus with a low cut dress? Bearing her ornaments, her adornments. Wow, I've been at it for an hour already. Yeah, let me take a drink here. <laughs> and I better, I better wrap this up. The 
women around Jesus never displayed their adornments. They displayed the beauty of a woman of God, gracious and kind and wise, like my mother. She nurtured me. My father, I never knew him. He put the seed there and he never bought me as much as shoelaces. My mother did it all. But I'm grateful for my father because he evidently was a good man because he had a good seed, but he just didn't grow up into the goodness of his life germ. And most of you wonderful brothers, you have a good seed because you are the people of God. But now we must become as good as the life germ that brings greatness into the world. We come from between the thighs of a woman. When a woman is giving birth, her knees are wide open, stretched to push life out. And there's something about nature, you always want to return to that from which you came. to be vulgar. I'm looking at nature and we are products of nature but nature under control brings good results but nature uncontrolled, out of control, out of divine order brings chaos. That's right. So what we're doing as men and women, obeying nature, but not wanting responsibility. I have a biological need, so I'm like a dog. Not me, I mean. I'm talking about you. <laughs> we all have that same urge. And that's why human beings multiply. Because we have a natural yearning for the opposite of ourselves. But when it's out of control and you just want a woman to take pleasure from her and never take responsibility for what that pleasure might bring. And sisters, you are sacred women. You are the woman of God, not the woman of man. You shouldn't be easy for a man to get to. 
because the sacredness of your womb and the vaginal tract that leads to the sacred chamber, which is the workshop of God. That's where Jesus came from. That's where Moses and Abraham came from. That's where Hannibal came from. That's where Toussaint L'Overture and Dessalines and Christophe came from. That's where the giants come from. So you don't let just anybody have access to your sacredness. You have the right to protect and preserve the integrity of your being and make a man earn his place there. Now, brothers, now, dear brothers, see, when the Spirit of God is in you, you won't take advantage of a woman. When the Spirit of God is in us, we see the greatness of a woman. The greatness of a woman. She's God's first act of creation after self-creating. He was not begotten. So if he's not begotten, he begot himself. It's a self-creation of the eternal creator. And then he studied himself and saw you there and brought you out as the second self of God. So the Quran says, he created you from a single essence and created your mate of the same. And from these two, he spread many men and women. You're marvelous, my dear sisters. And I bow to the majesty of women as I bow to the majesty of my mother. She made me who I am even though she tried to abort me three times. It's so easy for us to feel that pregnancy disadvantages us. And it's like the thief and the robber who goes to rob and somebody saw their face and they feel disadvantaged so I have to kill the person that saw my face so that I won't be caught. And so we do that, we get pregnant and we, we feel that it's an interruption to our lives and, and it's an interruption to our career. And when it's a preacher, it's an interruption for sure. When your wife is sitting there and you're having an affair with one of the women of the congregation. <laughs> Oh, listen, no, I, I, am I running you out? Here, 
See, we, we are natural men, but women are our trial. The woman is the woman of God. You stand up and preach with the spirit of God, a woman wants to comfort you. That's her nature. She's born as a consoler of the man. Because it's the man's job to struggle against the forces in nature, to overcome them for his woman, for his family, for his future. And when you're a struggler like that, a woman's duty is to console and comfort you and rub your head and run the bath water for you and cook a meal for you. So don't you tell me, pretty woman. Prettiness can't give health and well-being to your family. We know you're pretty. But when a man wakes up and he want to go out and work, you got to send him out right. That's your BMW, baby. Your black man working. You got to send him out right. And he'll bring it back to you. close that point with this. Civilization is never measured by a man. The degree of civilization in any society is measured by the woman. Any society. And when you got a woman that's free for all, that will undress herself for men to see her adornments and yearn for her and lust for her. Then she's spinning her web. Gotcha. And before long, she'll drop you. A man got a woman working for him. You home looking at the news or the general hospital where you'll be soon. <clears throat> and she's out working. You using her car, she got two. And what is she getting out of you? Do you think that sex can hold a woman? A non-working man, unintelligent? And you know she gonna rise up against you, then you hit her, knock her down. That's dangerous, brother. A good man will never hit a woman. I say a good man will never hit a woman. A good man will learn how to handle a woman. And so, my dear family, I'm, I got to get back to politics. But I never was off the subject. 
often the temptations, the trials of life, but greater is he if he's in you than he that is in the world. And I come back to Raz Baraka. Raz is a different kind of mayor. Yes, he's black and you're black. And, but don't be silly that because he's black, he got to do everything for the black and nothing for the other members of society that he's the mayor of. You, you can't think like that and be intelligent. He has to work for you. But that doesn't mean he mistreats others that he's the mayor of because that's what they did. How are you any better than them if you start acting like them when power comes into your hands? God is going to make you a ruler. Thou shalt no more be the tail. Thou shalt be the head. And the last will become first. It's all talking about you coming up out of this and God making us into a world ruler and the cornerstone of a kingdom that can never die. So Brother Roz, he's been a mayor for a little over a year now, going on two years, three years. Boy, time rolls. And look at what he's trying to do. He's trying to improve the quality of life of the citizens of Newark. He used to work to bring the Bloods and the Crips together to stop us from killing each other. And he invited me to mediate and to do something to help in that regard. The mayor needs you now. You need us how? He needs us to be men. Look, he, he wants to create jobs so you don't have to sling drugs. He wants you to enjoy the good work of your hands, not put your woman out on the block to become a prostitute so that any strange man that comes can have her and all you want is the money and you want the mayor to turn his back. Come on. He's the mayor. He needs our help. And the men, that's why I'm here tonight, because I heard he went to the Port Authority. I heard. I heard that he told them that the contract that we have with you, you only giving us one third of what that contract specifies and the courts, they're your people. So you're robbing the city of Newark that I'm the mayor over and I could give my people more services if you came up with your part. And some of them didn't like that he said this to them in private. He wasn't trying to bully them. He just said, look, man, the contract says this. You got to give us this. See, that's man talk. Now, of course, they want to punk us. 
They want to feminize us. We ain't giving you nothing. We got the muscle. Maybe. Maybe you meet some muscle. Maybe. I want to wrap this subject up because I think I've touched what everybody needed to hear. And I believe I've answered questions that you had in your heart and in your mind. You didn't have to speak it. God knew what you wanted and he fed me and I fed you. So most of your questions are almost answered. Talk to me. I came here tonight to stand for my brother, to stand for his mother, to stand for his family, and to stand for you. They're spreading all kind of rumors now in the black community to break the magnetism of the mayor with his people. That's how Satan works. I want you to look at your brother. Some of you have never met me, but you heard about me. I didn't come and tell you about me. The white man told you about me. The media told you about me. The Jewish control media hates me. Reverend, did we ever read the discussion in the book of John? Jesus in his controversy with the Jews of that day. Jews were arguing with Jesus about the circumstances of his birth. Right. We, we ain't born of fornication. Neither was Jesus. But they were throwing it up in his face. Anything they know about you, they'll try to use it against you. You ever notice you never see the dark side of the moon? It doesn't mean that there's not a dark side. But God keeps the light, the bright side of the moon that is reflective of the sun on the earth to balance the waters, to ripen the crops. But the dark side has no value. <laughs> oh, I... Look, man, I'm having such a good time. I can't. Because I see the way the, the, the Father is using me, and I'm, I'm so appreciative. Everybody in here got a dark side. You that are all the light, would you stand, please, so we can see God? And you that are standing, you know you want to sit down. Everybody got a dark side. So that's what made J. Edgar Hoover so strong. Because he would eavesdrop. And he would sneak around and, uh-huh, there he goes. I think, I think that's a strange woman. Look at Look at Dr. King. See, see him going there? And Dr. King is burning this enemy up, and he threatens Dr. King. Dr. King was a real man. He never backed down. So they sent a tape to his wife.
to destroy his home, his family. Come on. That's the kind of dirty dog we have. But now his dirt is being exposed for real, see? Now watch this, watch this. See, Jesus is telling him that he's not who he thinks he is. He says, we are Abraham's seed. Go read the argument. It's there in John. And Jesus said, if you were Abraham's seed, you would do the works of Abraham. He said, well, God is our father. Like they all like to say, God is the father of all of us. No, he's not. <laughs> Let me correct your thinking right now with God's help. God is not the father of everyone. He's the source of the life of everyone, but not the father. Let me, let me help you with that. So the Jews said to him, God is our father. And look at how Jesus answered. If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. He said, but now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth. I know you. You are of your father, the devil. He was a liar and a murderer from the beginning and the father of lies. Jesus. Two thousand years later, I stand before you. 2,000 years later, I stand before you. I love you. I'm willing to give my life for you. And I'm dying every day for you just by telling the truth. And that makes me hated, rejected, and despised by them. So they who control the media call me anti-Semitic, a hater, a bigot. Can you imagine a rotten dog like that calling me what he is? It got so bad that Jesus looked at them and said, my word has no place in you. Now, when you go to the Port Authority and you tell them the truth, you show them the contract, which they already know, <laughs> that uh, they owe you two-thirds more of what they have given you, and that's been going on for years. So, uh, how you call it? Retroactively, you should pay us. Now they're flexing the muscle. And that's what America is today. She's $19 trillion in debt, a debt she can never pay. And so the only thing that sustains her is her military might and she will use it on anybody that wants to collect the debt that she owes. She owes China over a trillion dollars. She owes Japan. She owes other nations money. She was once the largest creditor nation. Now she's the greatest debtor nation. But it's her army, her 
atom bombs, the hydrogen bombs, her technology that's holding her up. The dollar is falling fast. Yes. I just happened to pull out a $20 bill, Jackson. <laughs> I didn't want to take Jackson off and put who? who? Man, that's an insult. We don't want to be on your damn dollar. We want to create a dollar with the image of our great ones on it. Now here's the problem with Roz and his administration. He has the police chief with him. And he has, I don't know whether the school board people are with him. As I heard today that the budget for the school board is bigger than the budget for the city. But I also heard that lead was found in the water going to some of our schools. How, how do you direct lead that it don't touch a white school? How do you direct death that it's going to our young babies in school to kill their minds so that they will never be able to challenge and threaten white supremacy? is a very attractive human being. He was always working for us in the city council and school. He was always working for us. Now some of you are upset and the rumor is he sold out. Sold out to who for what? <laughs> See, that's how the enemy starts poisoning you. See, he's a liar. He's a slanderer. He's a backbiter. And the Quran said, woe to every slanderer. Raz does not deserve that. So there's money now. I got it. I'm ready to quit. It's a I've been going hard for four nights and, and uh, but look at this. I'm a man that's up in age and I'm not tired. I'm not tired of working for us. So tell me. What is the power that fuels the sun? They say, Farrakhan, how do you keep going? Because I'm powered by my love for God and my love for you and my love for the truth. And when I'm speaking the truth, I light up because it gives me life to give you life. So I close. I'm talking to the administration that's around my brother. They're coming to you. Close ones. And they will offer you money to betray your brother. 
and some of you want that money. Think about it. Talk about it. You know, Ju Judas. He was in the cabinet of Jesus. But Jesus knew he was a devil from the beginning. Thirty pieces of silver. What is that, brother, sister? To betray a man who has the good of the city of Newark in his heart. And they tell me that the governor said, we'll, we'll walk over you. See, these are gangsters. What will you do when you meet the wrath of God? I was a guest in the home of Mr. Edgar Bronfman, Sr., the man that owns Seagram's. I'm sure you know Seagram's, but you may not know the owner. <laughs> but I was at his penthouse apartment. It was arranged by um, Rock Newman and uh, Mike Wallace. And there I was in this big, powerful Jew's apartment. And when he came in, I was sitting and I stood and shook his hand and he said, hello Farrakhan, would you want a drink? I said, no, sir, uh, I don't drink. He said, you drink orange juice, do you? I said, yes. He said, that's me. He said, do you listen to music? I said, sure. He said, that's me. Do you go to the movies? I said, occasionally. He said, that's me. See, this is how they punk you. They know you ain't got no money. And they got a lot of money. So you got to come to white folk with your ideas. So when they ask you, what do you want to do? And you say, well, we're trying to. You already been feminized. That's right. You know how your wife comes to you when she wants a new pair of shoes and stuff? Hello, darling. <laughs> you remember the fun we had last night? <laughs> I'd like a new pair of shoes today. I saw it when I was downtown. So the white boy, when you go with your ideas, see, he starts asking you about your idea. If he can't see himself in the idea, he starts turning it a little. So that ultimately favors him. And then you tell him, he'll ask you, well, what do you need? Well, <laughs> Mr. Bronfman, I, I need... Uh, <laughs> And the next thing you know, he's running you. So when he was telling me what he is, I'm that, I'm that, I said, Mr. Bronfman, I know you're a very powerful and influential man, but the God I serve, I said, when he gets ready for you, all your power and influence can't keep you here one fraction of a second when he said your time is up. So I said, who's the real power? 
I'm ending now. The greater is he. You understand me? We went in to have dinner. And we were eating. The dinner was really nice, too. No, 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 we can eat the Jews' food, we Muslims, because their diet and our diet is quite similar. And they laid it out. I wonder why in the hell I ate, because I thought maybe they would have poisoned me. You know? <laughs> yes, right, son. My son said, yeah, but we... <laughs> He knew we knew where to come. <laughs> See, there's one thing about you when you lose your fear. We don't care nothing about what you think you got. Mm -mm. So we got to dinner and he was going on again about his influence and his power. He wants me to ask him for something. I didn't come there to ask him for nothing. I said, you know, Mr. Bronfman, there's a verse in the Holy Quran that goes like this. If a flea or anything smaller lights on your plate and takes a crumb, out of your plate. You don't have the power to call that flea back and tell the flea, drop that crumb back in my plate. So if you can't command a flea, why should I let you command me? Greater is he. So all of you that surround Brother Roz, don't take a price. Don't take a price to betray your brother. That's right. Because if you do and we find out. That's right. Go ahead. Yes, sir. See. You don't live with white people. You, you live among us. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are you threatening us, Farrakhan? Oh, no, I'm just stating facts. <laughs> Betrayers today of our people will not live long. Support your brother. To my brother Bloods and Crips and what they call the hybrid young gangs. You are the warriors. You are people that should surround him. You, you, you like to shoot? We just want to straighten out your aim. Come around your brother. I'm going to close with a quote. I had my brother write it down, and this is the only note I got. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. It says, 1 Corinthians 15, 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruptible. And this mortal shall have put on immortality. 
Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. What does it mean? We are corruptible now. We can take a price and betray each other, be treacherous to one another, but when love and God of love has entered into you, then the corruptible shall have put on incorruptible. You understand? Yes, sir. They have no price that they can give me. Come on, that's right. None to betray you. Why is that? Because the he that is in me makes their offer of corruption a laughable matter. And when mortality, see, mortality is your flesh that's bound to die. But when that flesh has put on immortality, meaning that God now is the ruler and master of your flesh, then you have taken mortality and put on immortality because what you work for in building the kingdom shall never die and you with it shall never die. So come on, brothers and sisters. Let God come in. Let him be the light of your life. Let him be the one that you love. And when he comes in, Satan can't occupy that space anymore. Thank you for listening, and may Allah bless you as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. God bless, you. God bless you. Please don't rush out. Please don't rush out. Please remain standing. Please do not rush out. The minister tonight has dotted every I and crossed every T. He has dealt with leveraging our political power. He has dealt with us working together as a family. He has addressed black men That's right. and black women. He's talked about our children. Mm-hmm. He's talked about not selling out and having a sense of dignity and pride. That's right. And always remembering the shoulders that we stand on. Yes, he has touched every base tonight. And there's one thing I learned in seminary, you never try to preach after the message have already come forward. We have heard the message. Please do not leave out of here tonight in a rush and let something happen. We have done everything decently and in order. Brothers and sisters, respect each other as we leave. Take your time as we leave. Let everybody be on one accord. I sincerely want to thank our entire staff tonight. Yes. And I want to come on. I want to thank our entire staff. And I cannot say enough about the love that is in this house tonight. But we need not let this love remain in this room. We must take this love out of here tonight and spread love because the Bible says eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what God has in store. And so it is mine tonight to thank the minister and to commend the minister.
จนเจ้าอย่างไร Now I would let you get away with that if somebody just scored a touchdown. But we just heard from the minister. Somebody ought to give it up for the minister. He has dealt eloquently with the Quran, and he has dealt eloquently with the Bible. He has reminded us that greater is He who is in us than He who is in the world. Doesn't get any better than that. So we leave here tonight on one accord, thanking God that a man has been raised up who will tell the truth and be willing to lay down for his brothers and his sisters. And we all thank you. I need you. I need you to take someone by the hand. I need you to take someone by the hand now. I know that we were going to fool some people tonight because everybody was asking, "Are you going to take up an offering?" Because brothers and sisters, you, you don't come in the Baptist church and not take up an offering. That's our middle. That's that's we'll call the offering Baptists. <laughs> but but tonight. In honor of this community and the message that we are trying to send—a message of coming together politically and supporting the leader that we have in place—to make sure that we surround him not just with love, but we surround him with support and understanding, knowing. That he has to serve all the people, and I want to say this: I am not afraid to pray for the mayor because I believe prayer can help strengthen a person from within. And we talk about prayer changing situations. No, we need to have prayer to change us first, and then prayer can help the situation. So let us pray. Here is a woman who has given birth. And we have Mitty here tonight. Mitty, did we say anything about you? Wait, okay, all right. Is that good? Amen. 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 Somebody. Mayor has to have people around him he can trust. Can't trust everybody. Take someone by the hand, and uh, I need everyone to bow your heads with us as we give a closing benediction. It is said that there was a Baptist preacher, and we're not sure what state he was from. There are those who would say that he was from the state of Louisiana. Others said that he was from the Peach State of Georgia. Some declared that he was from the Tar Heel State of North Carolina, and yet others said that he was from Mississippi. But at the conclusion of his service, his eyesight was dim. His hair had turned gray. His back was bent over. He walked with a limp, but he raised his hand above the heads of his parishioners, and he said, "Children, my hands are on the plow, my faltering hands, and all that is before us now is untilled land. The desert and the solitary places with us in this space. The handles of my plow sometimes with tears get wet, and yet and yet I don't believe that." Sir.